Hey guys, what's up? By Sectatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with my next video, and this is the first in a brand new series. This is going to be called Attack Meta, and as the name suggests, I'm going to be going through Town Hall 9, 10, and 11, talking about what the meta is or what kind of uh, attack strategy is working well at each Town Hall level. Uh, basically, I'm going to go through examples to illustrate the top attack strategies. I'm going to have some honorable mentions of uh, attack strategies that are also popular, uh, but I couldn't fit into the video. And then we'll also talk about uh, recent attack strategies that we've stopped seeing as much. i uh, talk a little bit about why that is. But I think this is going to be a good series. I hope you guys like it. And I think it's a good way for people to just kind of check in, uh, see what at least people in Genesis, in the One Hive uh, Genesis, One Hive Alpha family are using. And it might kind of keep you guys up to speed with what troops to upgrade and what attack strategies to be practicing in Friendly Challenge, all that good stuff. So we're starting with Town Hall 11. And at Town Hall 11, I'm going to show a dip attack just because we are not, at least in Genesis, seeing a whole lot of attempts at three-starring Town Hall 11s, it seems still in war that if you can, uh, even in some of the top wars, if you can three-star all the Town Hall 10s and two-star all the Town Hall 11s, that often will be enough to win you the war based on stars. Now, sometimes a Town Hall 11 three-star can come in handy, but right now, especially with the healers being nerfed, uh, I don't think we're seeing too many attempts at the... Uh, to take out Town Hall 11. So the first attack strategy we're looking at for Town Hall 11 is the bowler miner combination. And this has worked really well. Basically, you just come in with a kill squad that has 10, 12 bowlers and you can or cannot use the Warden's ability. It depends which phase of the attack you think is more important because after the bowlers go down, the Warden hopefully will peel off onto your miners. So Shy Guy goes ahead and pops the Warden's ability to give the miners some extra life. I think he did it a little bit late to be honest, but one thing you'll notice with the Town Hall 11 dips is that they have a lot of margin for error because it's not extremely difficult if you have a good plan to three-star a Town Hall 10. So you can see the bowlers bit off about half of the base, more uh, more or less. And notice that he deployed the miners, not really towards any defenses, just kind of near the Grand Warden. And it seems like that's kind of what you want to aim to do. Because basically, uh, if the Warden is on those miners, even without his ability, you still get that extra health uh, buff to your miners, which is very significant considering how many of the actual troop you have. Uh, the Warden does go down right there, unfortunately. So it's just going to be up to the miners. They're going to have to fight their way through the rest of the base but because they are level four miners which is two levels up from what you typically see at town hall 10 uh the warden or, or the miners that is will fight their way through the rest of the base so yeah this is the strategy we're seeing um i guess an honorable mention would go to mass miner uh where you don't even bring in the bowler kill squad but typically that's against bases that are either less upgraded that you can kind of just overpower or bases that don't have as good as a good of a design where miners can just kind of roll their way through through uh, but against a good anti three star base especially a high level one at town hall 10 typically you're going to uh, want to have a bowler kill squad to go in there before the miners enter the base so one strategy that we've kind of seen drop off is the mass bowler for town hall 11 it just seems like with the with miners being how how powerful they are which i think is maybe slightly more powerful after the update because they move slower and i think get more heal benefit uh, because they're underground longer uh, that hasn't made a huge difference but i think it helps a little bit and because miners are so powerful there's no reason to uh, risk using a bunch of bowlers that could go down and ruin the attack so uh sorry about that um i'm sure you guys will pause that and try to read what it said okay and i hope i don't get caught in a group message uh Hope I don't get caught in a group message, um, but I might, and I might have to do something about this, maybe cut away the video or something, but anyway, we're going to transition into Town Hall 10, and Town Hall 10, we're seeing a whole lot of minor attacks. Once again, miners are powerful for both the Town Hall 10s and the Town Hall 11s, both of the heavy hitters, and we're seeing, surprisingly maybe, uh, Queen Walks being something that's being used uh, to take out a good portion of the base before you send your miners in. Basically, the thinking behind this is that miners move well in big numbers. They, If you have 30 plus of them, they can really move through a base quickly, but they're not that spell demanding. Three heal spells is pretty much all you need, even if if you're taking out a big chunk of the base with your miners so because of that you can use a queen walk which doesn't use that much troop space leaving you a lot of space for your miners but does require a few spells which you can afford to uh 
to use on your queen walk because like I said the miners don't require as many spells so boom shakalaka coming in here with a queen walk minor attack uh, you can see goes in there I uh, get some great value for the queen takes out the CC troops the enemy heroes um, quite a few defenses and even though both infernos are up uh, I've said this in the past infernos aren't that big of a deal for miners to have to deal with uh, they can get through them much easier than like bowlers or valks can so I like how he comes in on the other side with the king one thing you want to look to do is make a runway for your miners so just make it a nice long strip they're not good at curving around a base they're kind of just a north the south troop uh, sort of like valks in a way although valks can actually curve around a base better than miners can but because miners don't uh, adhere to walls they are even more so north to south troops mean they move in a straight line so because of that you can take advantage by clearing out the bottom with the queen walk and the top with the king and a, the baby dragon a few uh uh, a support troops and clear out that runway for the miners and you can see they'll go in here they'll take out both infernos but because they're in such big numbers and he has three heal spells to invest uh, they can take out quite a big portion of this base also um the less jump spells you have to bring the better jump spells are typically something you should look to avoid bringing uh one jump spell is fine but if you have to bring two you should really rethink your attack because uh they're just not doing a whole lot for your troops they're really just opening up a potential path so look for a more natural way to get your troops into the base get the job done uh, jump spells typically shouldn't be something you want to rely on too much because uh they don't do much for your troops besides give them the opportunity to go to a certain part of the base so anyway uh unfortunately that one building doesn't go down but he has plenty of time to take it out and you can see the healers actually survived to the end of the attack weren't taken out by seeking air mines we might see people get more aggressive with those seeking air mines uh, depending on how things work out one more town hall 10 attack uh, this is going to be my own attack which i'm thrilled i was able to pull off in this war uh, by the way just commenting on the war real quick in case you guys were wondering it was a tough loss i'm not sure much information about the clan we just faced uh whether actually i was kind of zoned out with my own stuff while we, we were doing the search in for part of the battle day so i really don't have many comments to say it was just a close war and they got the victory so good job to them i think they're fair play i haven't looked into them at all but um fair play is kind of a relative term at this point so i'm not going to get into that but anyway uh this is my attack and as you can see i'm coming in with a valk kill squad um you know you can still bring compliments to miners uh which are, can be queen walks valks bowlers uh, any of the above works fine depending on the base. I used Valks for a few reasons. On this base, I want my queen to get that Inferno. So I'm hoping the Valks run out in front, take out all those buildings that are touching, and force my queen off to the right side where she can target the Inferno and take it down, meaning my miners only have to deal with one Inferno. So the miners are already deployed. Get those guys in early. Uh, the earlier, the better, typically, for miners. As soon as all the major threats are down, let your troops tank for each other. Uh, first heal spell goes down. They'll get in there, get the Inferno. And because the Valks cleared out the bottom of the base or the middle section for my queen uh, she locks onto the inferno gets it taken out just in time and that's all i need for my kill squad uh, one of the great things about miners is you don't necessarily need a ton of troops left up uh, from your kill squad they can pretty much finish off a base if they have uh, if they're in enough numbers and if they have sufficient spells I had a few wizards to kind of help keep them inside the base prevent them from just getting uh, you know wasting their time on trash buildings you want them in the base taking out valuable defenses so they'll finish off the rest of the base right here um, an honorable mention as far as town hall 10 goes would be um, let me find it here uh, Bow Laloon, which is the Bowler Laloon attack strategy. For very certain particular bases, it works well. Now, I did do an attack strategy talking about how it might become a big thing. I think it can be, but it takes the right base. Some of these strategies are good for most bases. It's one of those ones that's very base specific. So, uh, if you have a good base that you can take out three air defenses and an inferno with a kill squad, uh, you're going to be able to possibly utilize that attack strategy other bases might not work as well so that's an honorable mention some of the things we've seen fade out are mass valk to a certain extent you see it a little bit but not as much anymore 
We also don't see Mass Bowler as much at Town Hall 10, and I don't think we will, especially with the healer nerf making those healers more likely to go down. So those are just the two that I don't think we're seeing quite as much. Uh, let's move on to some Town Hall 9 action. We have four different examples to show of four different attacks that I think are all representative of the meta at Town Hall 9. And the first one, and by far the most popular that we're seeing, at least in One Hive Genesis, is going to be the, uh, I think this is the Stoned Hobo. This one actually uses four golems, so I don't know exactly what you'd call it, but uh, we'll go ahead and fast forward to the start. We're looking at Taz coming in here. Uh, with four golems and you can see three jumps. I wanted to pick this attack because there was actually a lot of uh, stoned hobo attacks but this one illustrated how important it is to move your golems through the base. I think unlike at Town Hall 10 the jump spell is much more valuable in that uh, just moving your troops to the right position on the base is very valuable because the like I would say the troop uh, DPS and the troop power for Town Hall 9 compared to the defenses is much higher than Town Hall 10 compared to the Town Hall 10 defenses. So you can overpower a base much more. Uh, at Town Hall 10, you have to be a little more crafty and uh, have a little more poise in your attack. Town Hall 9, if you get the troops to the right spot, by pure power alone, they can take it out. You don't necessarily need as many heals or rages to boost up their strength. So you can see Taz coming in here. And these compact bases are great. If you drop the jumps in the right spot, you can use you know up to three jumps. Typically, we only see one or two, but uh, three jumps does work as shown by this attack. You come through the middle of the base, the golems do all the tanking, the bowlers take out uh, tons of buildings. Uh, works well with level 30 heroes. Now, if you have lower level heroes, be careful about using this strategy because that means the bowlers are really the majority of your DPS. And you might want to, you know, go with one of the Valk attacks that we'll look at later or something like that because 30 30 heroes is a big difference from, you know, 10 10 or 15 15. So if you have, you know, especially very low level heroes, you can test this out, but I would be a little bit careful. Uh, don't rush to using this. Let's go ahead and move on to the next strategy. And uh, what base is this? Number 14. Uh, I think I... I think I know which one this was. Uh, this was by Nate, and yeah, this was the kind of HB HP, but has some Valks. This, um, I don't exactly know where to categorize it, and this is in no order, by the way. This doesn't mean this is the second most popular strategy. Um, I have three or two more after this that I think actually might be more popular than this one, but um, and besides the first one, this is in no order. But I wanted to show this one because it illustrates at Town Hall 9 right now the kind of how overpowering certain troops can be. And this one brings a lot of DPS. You have Pekkas, you have Valks, and you have um, your heroes, obviously, which helps if they're higher level. And you have bowlers. So that's a lot of DPS going into a base. I think it shows that healers are still alive and well at Town Hall 9. Um, because the healers are the main part of this attack. They are what keeps all this DPS alive. You can see he has four rages, and those aren't as much for the DPS troops as they are for the healers, because the healers get that raged uh, heal going, which is very effective. Now, he will lose a few to Seeking Air Mines and to uh, um, Air Defenses, but the majority of them will stay up, and typically you only need them for the beginning burst of the attack. You don't need them too much for the end. So you can see everything moving through the P.E.K.K.A.s do a great job tanking, as well as getting some DPS on high HP buildings. And one of the great things is even if your troops move to the outside of the base, uh, it doesn't matter that much because uh, they just kind of move through in a wave and they're still doing damage uh, to whatever part of the base they're in. Everything's really spread out here, but you can see he has another Rage spell left. And it's kind of questionable whether he even needs these Rage spells. Another healer does go down to a Seeking Air Mine, which will happen. I mean, you'll lose probably two of your healers to Seeking Air Mines alone if you go through the entire base. But for the most part, they're still effective, and uh, especially in the beginning of the attack, they will, they'll stay up long enough to get some initial heal as you go through the CC troops, the enemy heroes, stuff like that that has a lot of, uh, does a lot of damage to your troops. So crushes this base, ton of troops left up. I'm not sure this is specifically these troops or what you see a lot, but stuff like this, HB, HP, um, these kind of overpowering attacks, they work out very well. And uh, let's move on to the next one, have two more. 16, this is Buddy Jr. And you can see that some of these kind of mass air attacks also work well. Um, we'll talk a little bit about some of the other air attacks at Town Hall 9 and um, 
how they're faring. But right here, you can see comes in with a the king to trade for the queen and lure the CC troops. This is another base specific strategy in that uh, it works well against a base where you can get the queen for a very cheap price as well as lure the CC troops very easily and have your queen take it out. So just trades his two heroes for the CC troops as well as the enemy queen. And you can see, actually, I'm not sure if he gets that next air defense taken out. I can't remember. I don't think he does looking at how things are going to shape up, but he at least gets those two important things. Now he comes in with five lava hounds and the 20 balloons. So goes ahead and zap quakes the, um, the second air def or the third or the first air defense that is zap quakes that and this works out well because um you can afford to use the zap quake because now that we have haste spells and i shouldn't say now because they've been in the game for a while but before way back when you had to use rages but with haste they take up only one spell space so you can bring still a lot of haste spells to keep your balloons moving but uh, they take up less space, so you can afford to bring a large number of them while still being able to bring the two lightning and earthquake needed to, needed to take out an air defense. So it works out very nicely here. You can see still has a ton of lava hounds up, and the balloons don't require the rages. They do a ton of damage at Town Hall 9. I think two balloon drops will take out pretty much any defense besides an expo, and because of that, uh, the haste worked just fine. The defenses go down very quickly, and he has a ton of troops left up when everything's said and done. Uh, not a ton of cleanup, but the, the lava pups are plenty, and he saved a balloon, which you typically should, especially if you're about to crush the base. Save it and drop it on some high HP building to help with cleanup. So, nice attack. Let's go ahead and keep moving to the last example. We'll go through a few honorable mentions and a few things that are fading out, and then we'll wrap up this video. Okay, uh, last one is, what number, 18. Iceman, and this one is just a Valk attack. I mean, with Valks being so popular as they were only a few months ago, um, they're definitely still a factor at Town Hall 9. I think you could argue that after the stoned hobo, or at least in Genesis, I mean, this is all from the perspective of Genesis. I should clarify that further. Um, some of you guys might have different experiences, but this is what we're seeing, and I've seen this stuff with enemy clans that are also kind of top war clans when they attack us. So, you know, I'm just doing my best to represent kind of what I'm seeing at least, and especially if you're in a clan that's not in the top uh, you know, tier of the war community, it might be different. Or if you're just in a different clan, you know, things are different as you go through different clans. So uh, this is not going to possibly be representative of what you're seeing, but these attacks are worth noting and worth working on if you're an attacker at one of these town hall levels. But anyway, I think probably second to uh, Stoned Hobo would be a Mass Valk attack, and we're seeing some Queen Walks that are still working very well. I haven't seen many heal healers go down, especially when you keep your Queen outside the base. Now, I, I don't know if people are putting their Lava Hounds in, the in CCs more, but when a Lava Hound is in the Clan Castle, and I believe there is a Lava Hound, or actually maybe there wasn't, I can't remember for this, did he might have just taken out the CC troops, actually, I wasn't paying attention that much as I was talking, but um, regardless, even if there is, uh, is not a Lava Hound in the CC, uh, this still can work fine, and as always, why not throw some bowlers in your CC, it's a good complement to... Uh, to a Valk attack because it adds some range. You can shoot over walls, uh, which Valks can't do. Uh, you can see, I think he misses his king's ability, or the king's really low right there. I'm not sure if he'll hit it or not. But the queen took out a big part of the base. Right here, she's kind of on the last leg of her life. Uh, she takes out a few more buildings, but... Um, I don't think a, a, a healer has hit a Seeking Air Mine. I might be wrong, but even so, having three healers on your queen isn't even the biggest deal. So I think, you know, people might have overreacted, and possibly including myself, to the healer nerf. Um, it affected Town Hall 10 and Town Hall 11 probably more than Town Hall 9, uh, at least in my opinion, because at Town Hall 10, uh, we're, we're seeing different options besides healers that are, are, are presenting themselves, but we're really not seeing any queen walks uh, being used much at Town Hall 10 besides with the miners. So actually, now that I talk about it, I'm, you know, it's hard to tell. We'll see how things shape up because as I'm saying that, I also showed some he uh, queen walks working at Town Hall 10 in this video. So I'm kind of going back on myself. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, we'll see how this shapes up. But I think that overall, you know, across town hall levels, the healer nerf hasn't been that big of a deal. And for the most part, 
Uh, we're still seeing them at you know Town Hall 9, Town Hall 10, uh, maybe not Town Hall 11, but we're seeing them at Town Hall 9 and Town Hall 10 in you know some capacity at least. So anyway, this attack works well. You can see he has a Swag Heal spell. The Valks are powerful, especially against certain bases that are spread out and that have some good uh, Valk pathing that's predictable because they're one of the more unpredictable troops. Uh, so to wrap this up for Town Hall 9, uh, things that are honorable mentions is the Go La Loon. We're also seeing people bring a kill squad, usually bowlers, get in there, get some air defenses taken out, and use some La Loon on the rest of the base, kind of like at Town Hall 10. Um, as far as the strategies, there's, we're seeing dying out a little bit. Now, I'm going to say HGHB just because I haven't seen it in some of the last few wars in Genesis. Maybe you guys are having success, but I think that right now, there's troops that move through the base faster than giants, and I think the giants are just a little bit too slow for uh, the attack because especially with seeking air mines, now being able to take out healers, your healers are very precious, and a few of them can go down while the giants are beating on a wall if the bowlers or the queen don't reach an air defense in time. So uh, troops that move faster th through the base like Pekka's or Valks or something like that are kind of taking the stage and re replacing Giants for for the most part. So at least in Genesis, we've seen HGHB uh, become a little less popular. Also, any kind of hog uh, attack that has more than 12, 14 hogs we're not seeing. I think there's just better options. And whenever you use a ton of hogs, you're risking hitting giant bombs and possibly just, you know, in the blink of an eye, uh, ruining your attack. So... Those are the two things we've seen kind of fade out. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this series, and let me know what you think in the comments below. I'll be sure to check it out, and I'm looking to make some more of these videos. They'll be kind of occasional because the meta doesn't change too quickly, but uh, every once in a while, I'll, I'll update you guys uh, if you like the video on what is, uh, what's working at Town Hall 9, Town Hall 10, Town Hall 11. So thanks for watching, and like I said, I'm working on the bowler uh, pathing video, which should come out. Uh, sometime probably tomorrow or the next few days. So I'll see you guys then. Bye, Sactatron out.